Hey, what's up guys? I'm Katie Bang and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If this is the first video you're watching, um, hi. This is probably a little bit confusing. I'm a pet channel. I talk about my pets because animals are my passion. But over the last couple months, I actually filmed a video with my dad and everyone really liked it and wanted me to film a video with my mom. Unfortunately, I can't because I don't talk to my mom and I kind of want to just put it out there because I get so many comments and questions about it. I kind of want to put out my story with my relationship with my mom because she is pretty abusive and has hurt me a lot. But uh, a disclaimer for everyone, I love mothers. I'm so excited for the holidays. Family is my favorite thing in the whole entire world. I'm just honestly tired of being a victim in this situation. I'm tired of feeling like bad because my mom doesn't care about me and I just want to tell my story. So one, if anyone feels like this is them or they've had a similar situation, you're not alone and you know that because I know I felt alone a lot. And two, I just think this is my platform, this is my voice and I honestly, I feel so close to you guys. I want you guys to know absolutely everything about me and this is one of those things where I'm finally comfortable sharing this. So here we go, let me get a little sip and then we're... We're going to start. I'm a little nervous to make this because I love spreading positivity and I don't want this to be a negative thing or something where you feel bad for me. I just want to share my story and share my experience and if you are into story times or what want to know more about VK to Bing, what's going on with me, totally listen. If not, skip it. It's cool. I appreciate you. You're the dopest. See you next video. Okay, I'm actually gonna get into it now. I'm done stalling. I'm done being nervous. I love you all. Families are great. Moms are wonderful when they're great. Um, but when they're not, it's kind of crappy. So honestly, when I was growing up till the age of 10, my life was literally perfect. My dad made a lot of money. He owned his own business and my mom was a stay at home mom. I was super close to her. We did lots of arts and crafts. We're super close. And then unfortunately, as stuff was going on, me and my mom distanced a lot. So pretty much what I like to mark as the start of everything, kind of hitting the fan and not going well, is my house burned down when I was 10. And that's like the first thing I can remember that led to the domino effect of like, me and my mom not talking or having a relationship. So me and my mom were super close, but I was always closer with my dad. I was always a daddy's girl. It was like a thing. And my dad always really liked me because like, I'm a cute kid. And, <laughs> and what happened was when I was like 11, my parents got divorced. My mom pulled a lot of shady stuff when she did it. My mom hired a high power attorney, which will be a detail in a second that you're gonna wanna know. And, it just, she didn't do it as classy as a lady should. Um, and then I was 11, I had just lost my house, I had just lost my family, and she decided to start talking really bad about my dad. And that's fine if she doesn't like him, but she went out of her way to alienate him and make up a bunch of lies about him to the rest of my family. So yeah, my dad wasn't perfect, and I know that. I know all his mistakes. He's made a lot of them, trust me. Um, but he is, has always been super honest, and I've been, and the kids have been his number one priority. So she really made a lot of lies up about my dad, which I actually found out when I was around 11 or 12. I was going to the Ostrich Festival with my family, or with my friends. I was like getting to the age where I was starting to do stuff with my friends, and my uncle, we're gonna call him Uncle P. His name is Uncle P. He was really close with my mom. They actually live in our old house now, and not the one that burnt down, the one before that. And so Uncle P took me to the ostrich festival, and this was right after my parents got divorced, probably six months after, and I was living mainly with my dad at this point. And Uncle P looked over, and I know his intentions were good, and he was like, hey, I'm really sorry that your dad isn't in the picture as much anymore. And I didn't really know what to say. And when I was younger, like not now, I talk and I'll stand up for myself a lot now, but when I was younger, I was like very passive and shy. So I, I just said, oh no, it's fine. Like, thanks for caring. And that's pretty much the only time we talked about it. But time went on and my mom had made up a bunch of lies about how abusive my dad was, which he wasn't. I can attest to that. Anyone will attest to that that knows him or knows their marriage or anything at all. Um, so 
pretty much because of how my mom played things out and didn't think about how they would affect me, um, she caused all of my family to be really, really concerned about her. So everyone was always wondering if she was okay and what was going on with her. Unfortunately, this train of events so far led me to feeling really alone and extremely suicidal, which is not normal, and I didn't know at the time that it was not normal to want to die 24-7. Boxer came in and my stamp camera stopped recording, which was kind of rude, but we're back at it. So this was kind of the start of the downfall of my mental health. And then I got into therapy because therapy is extremely good for you. It's great to talk to someone, highly recommend therapy. But <laughs> my therapy experience was very jaded because my mom actually couldn't just let me have a relationship with a therapist. I didn't know about this at the time, but she was calling my therapist and setting up sessions before my therapist to talk about how bad my dad was, how I was manipulated by him, which my dad honestly was just so solid and nice and wanted me to have a relationship with my mom and wanted me to be super close to her and he's always been like, Katie, have a relationship with her. You should stay with your mom more. You should see her more. Like, he's always been rooting us on. He wants me to have a good relationship because I think he knows how bad I wanted that. So, she had it in her head that he was the one telling me not to have a relationship with her, all this stuff, which I honestly just realized that she was making up lies. And I was like, well, that makes me feel bad. I don't think that's fair. And that kind of drew me apart from her. So, my therapist started like getting really weird and being on her side completely because she was calling them and paying them. So they started telling me things that therapists shouldn't tell you. They started being very into choosing sides with my mom, always saying what she would say. So I didn't have a great therapy experience. And then at that point, my mom started getting into spiritual stuff like holding rocks and doing the cactus pose to heal yourself. She's technically a certified life coach. She did that for a while. Um, which was honestly kind of funny, but she told me, she was like, you should get a psychic reading to see where your life's gonna go. And it was one of her friends, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a psychic reading, that's exciting, I'm into that stuff. Like, I think psychics are cool. Like, I don't know if I technically believe in them or don't believe in them, but I was like, I'm getting one, I'm fine with that. So, I get a psychic reading, she told her friend pretty much everything to say, and the psychic, the psychic, not a psychic, her friend, told me how bad my dad was, that he didn't care about me, that I should live with my mom because my dad's not good, and just a bunch of things that really messed with me because my dad had always been so supportive and my mom has always been like not having my best interest, so that really messed with me and I remember it gave me so much anxiety because the psychic was telling me that my dad was awful, that I shouldn't live with him, and turns out it was just her friend and she planned it, so... She did a lot to mess with my head and that really messed with my mental health and caused me a lot of anxiety or at least worsened my anxiety a lot. Then I didn't really talk to her from 13 to 16. Um, be between this age gap, I she'd call me and she'd make me go for Christmas pictures and if family was coming in town or if Uncle P and Aunt S that live in our old house were having like a get together because they'd have those, she would be like, yo, um, if you don't come, I'll call the police on you and you'll have to come to my house because technically my parents had 50-50 custody and she would always be like, if you don't come for Christmas pictures and make it look like we're a happy family, I'm going to call the police on you. So then <laughs> she would make me come to events that I didn't want to just to make herself look like we had a relationship and make it look to others like we had a relationship when we never did. So I think at that point that made me more angry because it made me feel like she only cared about what it looked like, which she did, versus like actually having a relationship with me. Okay, next event that happened is I cut my fingers off in 2015. That's a whole nother story. So they're here, see? They don't look that bad. They're honestly pretty good. Like, they're chilling. Um, shredded them right off with a blender, making sweet potato biscuits. And <laughs> I was in the hospital, and my dad stayed with me all night in the hospital. He was super kind. I was in there for like a week. He stayed every single night. He went home and fed the dogs and then came back. But my mom, she took that as a way to see her new boyfriend because I <laughs> had gotten out of surgery on Thanksgiving, 
and she dropped my little sister off because she had my little sister because my dad and I were in the hospital and dropped my little sister off at Uncle P and Aunt S's and said hey I have to go visit Katie in the hospital um can you please watch her all day for Thanksgiving so I can spend it with her and they were like yeah obviously because I was sick and like hurt in the hospital she never came that day so she had told them she was going to see me but actually she drove all the way to her boyfriend's house to have Thanksgiving with their family and used it for free child care instead of actually caring about her kids so that's nice <laughs> Next situation, we again don't talk for a very long time. Every once in a while to see like my sister, we'd get lunch. Then my dad literally had his brother completely screw him over and he got super addicted to drugs. His brother did, not my dad. My bro dad's brother and him owned the company together. His brother got super addicted to drugs, took everything out of it, ruined it. And then my dad lost everything, which in turn meant I lost everything. I had to sell my horses, sell pretty much everything I owned within the matter of a week. It was one of the worst things ever. I lived with my dad growing up and that's the only thing I really had a memory of. And my dad had to move. I had to move back in with my mom after not talking to her since I was like 10 or 11 really and having a relationship with her. So I lived there for five months before my dad came back and life was happy again. But when I was there, it was honestly it was bad. She used me a lot for taking my sister places. She'd go on vacation all the time and just leave the house to me, which was fine because I didn't like her being there and I didn't like being with her. So I would hang out with my friends. We would all have like major sleepovers at her house. And I had a boyfriend at the time. He would always hang out and we'd like chill there. And I would watch my sister a lot for her. Um, but there were a lot of weird scenarios. So since I had just moved in, I was actually having my birthday there and I was super excited because it was my 17th birthday. I was going to hang out. I didn't have a birthday party for my 16th birthday because money was so tight. So I was really, really, really excited to have a birthday party with my friends. I had a boyfriend. We were going to go to the lake and stuff. It was going to be great. And I'm pumped at this point. And she tells me a week before, oh, I'm going on vacation on your birthday. And turns out that she got married on my birthday and left me with my sister to watch. So I was stuck with my little sister on my birthday, which I love her to death, but I really wanted to hang out with my friends and stuff and didn't get to celebrate my birthday because I was taking my sister to Bible school that was like 20 miles away. So I had to drive there and back on my birthday and not be able to do anything because I had to pick her, drop her off in the morning, pick her up in the afternoon. So it was kind of crappy and thankfully my friends just hung out with me the whole day. But yeah, that was not, not a good, not a good time. Then fast forward, my dad comes back. I'm pumped. Me and my mom had just fought the whole time she was there. She just got really weird and it got to the point where like my friends were starting to be like, it's weird because she seems so nice when you first meet her and then you start to see what you mean. And I was like, yeah, it's like she's like two different people. It's really weird. And she was like never like screaming or yelling. She was just always very abusive in the way of like mentally gaslighting you and making you feel like everything was your fault. Or she, if she had any form of power, like for example, when I wasn't living with her, her and my dad would split my school bills and I had graduated in two years, high school in two years, like go me, that's awesome. And most parents would be like, yeah, I'll split the bill with your dad so that you can graduate. She knew that my dad was living paycheck to paycheck, decided not to split the bill so I couldn't graduate. Thankfully, I borrowed money from a friend or like I got, I watched a dog and was able to pay for it. But I literally cried for like days straight because I didn't think I was going to be able to graduate after putting so much work in because she had power at that point and was like, since you're not talking to me, I'm not gonna let you graduate high school. So anytime she had power, she would use it against me, which is a very like weird power trip tactic. Then back to what I was saying, I moved back with my dad, life is great, I'm fine, I don't have any hate towards her at this point, I'm chilling. Um, it's 2017, we're just having an okay time, we're not really talking too much, but every once we'll text here and once in a while, we'll text here and there. Then 2018 rolls around and boy, I was like, you know what? I'm older now. I don't care about what happened. I'm going to forgive her for not caring about me being suicidal, for caring about retreats and stuff more than me, for lying about the hospital, for 
lying about my dad and making everyone hate my dad and alienating him from the family. I'm gonna forgive her, wipe the slate clean. It's all about forgiveness in this heart, baby. 2018 New Year's resolution, be best friends with my mom, have a relationship with her, and boy, I went in. I worked so hard. I invited her to lunch. I was the one making all the effort. I invited her to lunch. I invited her on hikes. We hung out probably once a month, which was super good for us, maybe twice a month, like a couple times. So January, February, March, April, we were doing great. May rolls around, and eh, we're fine. We're on talking terms, but we're not wonderful. So my 18th birthday rolls around, and a week before, my mom tells me that she's leaving for to Hawaii for a week and a half, and my aunt's gonna come in with the cousins, and they're all gonna hang out like with my little sister at her house, which is fine. This is my aunt Kay. So my aunt Kay is hanging with the cousins. But I had a different cousin, um, cousin Jay, screw me over, and she was supposed to be watching the dogs, um, because I have, like, girls that'll hire to watch dogs, and she was supposed to take the job, but then she screwed me over, it didn't take the job, and I got super stressed because I already had four dogs at my house, so I was gonna have six dogs, which is way too many for sleep, but I had no choice because it's my company, so I take the dogs, um, and because of my other cousins coming in town, my cousin Eamon is super nice and we've always had like a really special bond. I absolutely love him. And so I was like, Eamon, would you help me out? He's like, yeah, I want to stay with you and your dad. I want to do that. He is down. So I was like, okay. So I call my Aunt Kay like 20 times before she gets here the week before. She doesn't answer. My mom tells me it's fine. She said it's cool if he comes. Whatever. Then she gets here. And it's my birthday, the Saturday before the Monday that Eamon was supposed to come to my house for a week. And Callie was supposed to come from 10 to 2. We were going to have like a brunch, hang out with the family type thing. And I was going to go to a nice vegan restaurant with my friends for dinner. And you know, party it up for being 18. My Aunt Kay decides to go to Flagstaff for 4 hours. Flagstaff is like 2 hours from me. So obviously it wasn't going to work, but because of that, she's like, I want to leave in the morning so I have time. So I pick Callie up at 8 a.m. They go to Flagstaff. I call them at 2 because they're not here. I'm like, yo, where are you guys? And they just don't answer her phone. She turns it off and isn't answering my calls. 8 p.m. rolls around. I couldn't go anywhere for my birthday because my sister was sad and didn't want me to ditch her. So for my whole entire birthday, I was sitting there hanging out with my little sister like, and my, my stepmom, who's the nicest person ever, was like trying to distract my sister with Uno, but my sister was not having it. She's like, I want to hang out with my older sister. So I had to spend my whole birthday hanging out with my sister, and I'm calling my mom mad. My mom said, don't ruin my time in Hawaii. So I'm annoyed because I'm like, it's my birthday, and you're over there in Hawaii not caring about anything, and the arrangements you made aren't working. So I get mad. I chill though, I'm like, you know what, I love my sister, we're gonna have a good day because me and my sister are close, and it's fine. Then that Sunday, the day after, my Aunt Carrie gets back in the morning and texts me and she's like, when are you dropping Callie off? And Callie had told my dad that she doesn't want to go back to my Aunt Kay's because she was yelling at her and putting her in timeout. So it's fine, it's whatever. Well, I'm chilling. I'm a mad, but I'm fine, and my cousin, Aben, was with my Aunt Kay, and he texted me and said, Aunt Kay is saying that you're destroying the family, you're ripping them apart, your mom's saying that you've always been like that, and you're a defiant teenager, and you're just, you don't care about family, and you're ripping it apart, which I was super sad about, because I had tried to call her over 30 times, like, I had tried to contact my Aunt Kay, so there was no drama, so we just figured out a plan, like, communicate like adults you know so I go I hear that I get super mad that she's talking bad about me to like my baby cousins because she's like what 50 and I'm like dude I'm going over there so I drive over because she's still not answering my calls I'm like we're settling this and I go to talk to her and she's like I'm not talking to you I don't have to talk to you and it's this huge thing she says a lot of hurtful things and I come home my dad got mad because he had paid like a hundred grand because she murdered two people so he had paid for her attorney and therapy fees and everything because he was making a lot at the time and my mom begged him to. 
So he paid to get her off in six years instead of like spending life in prison for murdering two people. And <laughs> after all of that happened, I called my mom hysterical and I was like, she's psycho, like I don't know what to do, I'm trying so hard, I've tried to communicate with her. My mom was like, you need to stop, like just was awful to me. The next day, my sister is like, I have to tell you something. And I'm like, what do you have to tell me, girlfriend? Like, tell me, we're sisters. Sorry, my camera stopped like four times during this video. So then my uncle, my sister proceeds to tell me that my uncle Jim, who does a bunch of drugs, like not a good person. I actually have a restraining order against him because he's threatened to kill me and my dad multiple times. Um, and my mom knows all this and that he's threatened to kill me and everything and she's watched me have anxiety attacks over it because I was there for the five months it was happening and my mom my sister tells me that my mom has been letting her and her friends go to lunch to meet Uncle Jim and I freaked out and I felt so betrayed because you would think your mom would have your best interest and my mom was hanging out with somebody that was like threatening to kill me and so I made a post on my Finsta and pretty much said I think it's really crazy that my mom who threatens to be sane and a life coach and knows that I have a restraining order against my uncle for him trying to hurt me is letting my little sister around him like that's just honestly so unsafe and it hurts my feelings so much because it's one thing if I get hurt or if my dad gets hurt but like if my little sister gets hurt because of my mom like that's just awful so I made a post my cousin sent it to my mom i called my mom and literally told her i was like yo i made a post about this and my mom was like pretty much like i'm not talking to you i don't want a relationship with you that's awful i cannot believe it that's so hurtful that you'd say those things and i said everything i said is true i might not have handled it the best but like you're putting my little sister at har in harm's way i'm not gonna be happy about that and like no one will and she got super upset and I have super bad anxiety. She pretty much told me she didn't want a relationship with me. And I've always struggled with like, when I have super bad anxiety or triggers, I'll like start thinking suicidal thoughts, which I'm in therapy for, I've worked on. And every single, it's pretty much, not really all like have something bad happen, but if it's related to my mom not wanting me, that's when I get super triggered and want to die, want to die which is not safe. So I told her, I was like, I was texting her, she was hanging up on me. I was texting her, I'm like, I want to die, please answer your phone, like, I really don't want to live anymore, can you please answer, I'm scared, and she texted me back, nope, I'm at Chuck E. Cheese's, I'm not going to answer, so then I call my boyfriend, he, like, rushes over, because he can tell I'm not okay, thankfully he sits with me, I call my brother, and explain to my brother, Colin, everything that happened, and how, like, I was just saying how I felt, and she didn't like it, but it's dangerous that she's bringing my sister around Uncle Jim, and my brother was like that's insane he called my mom and got mad at her and my mom lied to him and said that I made up everything that I never texted her that I was going to do anything and I literally like had the text or like had them on my old phone and she just told him I was lying so then my brother stopped being there for me and stopped responding to me and like he'd respond but I could tell like it was awkward and he didn't care and he didn't believe me and so it made me feel even more alone and thankfully I called my um, stepmom Stacy, she's the bomb.com, I love her, and I was telling her everything, and she was just like, honey, like, you need to do whatever feels best for you. I went into a new therapist, and my, me and my new therapist decided that it was healthiest for me to cut ties with my mom for a period of time, because it's not safe, and it's not normal to want to die. And I hadn't since I had started talking to my mom again in 2018. So my therapist was like, until you get to a better position, we're going to have you not talk to your mom, which was totally fine. I was willing to do it. I wanted to do it. My therapist just brought up that idea. I'm like, you know what? That probably is the safest route because I don't want to put myself in harm's way. And so I stopped talking to my mom. I cut all ties. I don't talk to her for over six months. And then I have surgery. She doesn't reach out. She doesn't ask how I'm doing or anything. And then... I crash my car and honey reaches out because it has to do with money because it's the car that is damaged and her name's on it or whatever so she then all of a sudden cares because it has to do with money and so I talked to her about it she is like can I take you to the chiropractor I let her take me to the chiropractor once it's awkward um 
but she has a really good way of pretending that she's perfect and nothing's wrong. So I just pretended nothing was wrong too. So after that, I needed a new car because my car was totaled. My dad's credit's messed up because of everything that happened with his brother and the company and having to leave. And my um, credit is non-existent because I just turned 18. So I'm still working on building it. So I can't take out a lease on a car because I don't have any credit and you need credit for that. And credit depend helps with like lowering the rates per month and I'm paying for the car. So my dad and I asked her if she could co-sign on the car um, in order to save me a couple hundred dollars a month. She said no. Okay, my camera keeps stopping, so I'm trying to wrap this up. Um, yeah, so I pretty much, that was the last time I talked to her, it was a couple of weeks ago, and I said, um, and the problem with it was not that she said no, it was, she was like, if you would have talked to me within the last six months, I would have done it. And I know that she wouldn't have, I know that she just had power over me, because I, it would have been nice to have her co-sign for the car. And so she gets to these abusive tactics where it's like, if you would have done this for me, or if you would have been there, then I would have thought about it. And I just honestly told her, and I was like, you know what, I think this is going to be the last time I ever talk to you. And I'm not upset about the money. It just sucks because this is one time where you did have the power to step up as a parent and do something for me without expecting anything in return. And like, you abandoned me. Um... Pretty much every single time I've needed you before. When I was in the hospital, you weren't there. When I had my surgery, you weren't there. And I needed you to step up. It would have been nice to have you step up and care without asking for anything in return. And I told her, I was like, it really just hurts because you're there for Colin, my older brother, which is a different story. It's about guilt. And you're there for my little sister, and you're there for one of my stepbrothers, the other one. She screws over. Hi, Mason, I love you. I'm sorry they don't like you either. Um, and I just told her, like, I was like, it hurts because when you need your mom or just want your mom to care about you so much, I can't, I can't explain how much that does to you and, like, how much it's hurt my relationships because of how insecure I am because my mom hasn't been there for me or loved me like a mother should. And I told her, I was like, you don't understand the reason I haven't texted you or called you and had to block you on everything for the last six months is because the last time you talked to me and didn't take me saying I wanted to kill myself seriously, my therapist and I talked about how it was not okay for me to put myself in a position where my life was at risk because of somebody that didn't have my best interest. So I needed to take time to work on my mental health so that the next time something like this happened, I didn't feel like I wanted to die, which I didn't. <laughs> I swear I didn't at all, so that was good. But I told her, I was like, you're there for everyone. You make nachos for Carter and pretend that you're his mom. Like, I wish you just would be there for me when I needed it. I wish you would be there for me emotionally. I wish you would care about how I feel and hear out how much you hurt me when you divorced my dad, not because of the divorce, but because of how much you trash talked him after and made it so I couldn't talk to my own family when I needed them. I wish that you realized you took the attention away from me when everything bad happened and put it on you so I didn't have someone ask me if I was okay. I wish that she would have looked back and understood. I'm not mad about money. I'm not mad that she did all of that. I'm upset because she's never chosen to step up and be a mom. And I need a mom, like I've needed one. And I don't want you guys to think that moms are bad. I would do anything to have a good relationship with my mom, but I have finally accepted that it's healthier for me not to. And just how she uses these tactics of when I do need her and she has any sort of power instead of being a mom and stepping up and doing what's right for her kid, she always has to make it my fault and I'm the reason that she's not being a mom. Instead of just being like, you know what? I, I'm gonna help you and I think what makes it so hard is I love family so much and the holidays are so important to me and I would do anything to have a relationship with her and my goal for this year was to have a relationship with her and I tried so hard and she didn't want to have a relationship with me and she chose not to and she hurt me a lot this year and I've really had to learn from it and I felt alone and there's been a lot of roller coasters of emotions but I'm honestly glad that 
everything happened and I'm glad that I went to therapy and learned all of this and learned how to communicate and understood that it's not my fault and I'm done being the victim. I'm not a victim anymore. This is just the situation and this is how I've adapted and I have an amazing stepmom now who I love more than anything and who I can talk to about boys and I can talk about really crazy things with and say funny girls things and that gets things like the women's march and different understands different things that like dads don't get like it's cool and then also my dad he is literally like superman he's he's made so many mistakes and he's not perfect at all but i love him so much and he always figures out a way to make me have what i need and to be there emotionally for me and he's such a good listener and i have the best little sister ever we're an amazing family i have so many animals like dang that's a lot of love i have a great boyfriend i have uh, my best friend Liv, my best friend Alexis, we all, I can call them whenever I need, I can talk to them for hours about girl stuff, and life is good. And sometimes, some days it's really hard to get through the day, because I do miss having a mom, and I wish that I could fill that void in some way, but it's not healthy for me. So honestly, what my message is here is like, if you have a great mom, hug your mom. If you don't, you're not alone, but... This isn't teenage angst, this is just what happened and this is how I adapted. I'm done being the victim and hug your moms, <laughs> hug them really hard, <laughs> tell them I love them, send them love from Katie Bing, um, and yeah, I love you guys. I hope that this didn't come off as like a harsh, awful video where I seem like crazy or anything. This is just me telling my story. I love you guys. You are my family now. You're mo more family to me than my mom is. So I appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I'm going to go back to talking about pets now. Bye.